can go. Uh, let me just do my formal YouTube intro and then we'll uh, really get going. All right. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Thank you for watching on YouTube this exclusive Twitch interview, which you can check out our Twitch page down below. We're doing New Music Fridays and conversations with various artists over there on the regular. And today, we're going to be talking with a real internet legend, a Mr. Matt Ox, rapper, artist, uh, 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 rapper, artist extraordinaire. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, bro. I, I'm really just grinding, bro. I'm going to keep it a bean. I've just been in the studio every day just having fun with it, though. Okay. That's all, all right, so you dropped the, uh, recently this new single, Learned. And, um, you know, I noticed that it, ha it has a bit of a kind of a dark sound to it, almost like a gothic kind of dark, tortured sort of sound to it. Is that a sound, is that a style that interests you a lot right now? Like, for example, uh, uh, you know, let's let's take, uh, uh, you know, uh, Playboy Cardi's like new whole lot of red record. There are a lot of dark, you know, almost like vampire goth type track. Oh, dark? Yeah, there are a lot of like dark vampire type tracks. I on heard there. a lot of I, 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 guess, I guess what I want to ask is like, do you feel like that's a direction things are moving in? I mean, more on some, I've been listening to The Prodigy mm. and like uh, a lot of, I've been listening to a little bit of Kurt Cobain too, but I, just in dark sense, I got that from yeah. X. X, X. Well, I, I also I also wanted to ask that. you if that's, yeah, now that that is sort of like building into this wave. I I feel like that's, that's what made the punk wave. That's what made a lot of the rock inside mm -hmm. of rap. It was like this X drop. I mean, that's where I saw it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to know if you felt like it's sort of like, you know, again, a figure like Cardi is really kind of bringing that to a mainstream level of visibility. But, you know, knowing how big of a fan you are of X's music and the fact that you crossed over with him, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, you know, do you feel like he was an inception point for a lot of the popularity behind that right now? You think, uh, you said Cardi or X, X? X. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I feel like a lot of what's going on right now, especially right now, is just... It was his way like a couple years ago. Like he was doing that. But I feel like it he would have named it something. Like he would have made it a genre, like a new but he didn't he wasn't able to be alive at that time. You know what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say? It's just like he would have he would have started so many waves if he was still here. But it's just it's now now it's living through other people, you feel me? Like his music living through other people. I think, you know, I, I think that presents kind of an interesting um, scenario. I mean, considering like the wave of rappers that came during that time that amassed these really passionate audiences and had more of maybe a darker emotional sound, be it X, be it uh, yeah, be, well, be, be it X, be it Little Peep, be it like Juice World. Do you feel like if 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 all of them and other rappers like them were able to sort of continue doing what they were doing, there would have sort of like come a new genre out of all of this? For sure, for, I mean, there already is with it, alternative, whatever, but, but yeah, it's definitely new genres coming soon and they need to make that move. I feel like, like as, as labels, as Spotify, all the, like just having new genres, just making new genres, that, that's fire. Like people should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, yeah. if you, you're, you know, do you yourself feel like you're operating in this, this new genre or maybe something outside of that? I feel well. What I've been doing is just experimenting lately. You mm. feel me? Is it's just trying different things that I haven't heard yet. You feel me? Because I just I I don't like listening to like the same thing over and over. Like my old music, like I don't like listening to my old music no more because it's just like I heard it so much. You mm. feel me? I want to make something where I can listen to it a hundred times now and just like not get old. It don't. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard to do that. It, it takes. But other than that, I've really just been testing out new sounds, new pitching vocals up, structuring. I've been producing a little bit too, just trying to like tap in with it fully, 100%, just to make new sounds. Like, I really want to just, because I love it. Like, I've been doing it since I was like eight years old. You feel me? Like, 
beginning, like music was just life. You feel me? So it's just. Uh, you know, speaking of some of that experimentation, I know you were commenting online about like um, making songs that aren't directly about a certain thing or even making tracks that are almost like collages. Um, you know, yeah. th there, there's lots of different examples of that throughout the history of popular music. But I but I wouldn't no, say, no. you know, there's I'm not. Well, no, no, I'm, well, no, no, I'm, I, I, of course not. I'm not trying to say that. All I'm saying is, like, I can't think of many artists, though, who are sort of like in your lane, who are sort of like, you know, evolving past the SoundCloud scene who are trying to do that, though. So, you know, given that that's kind of like where your roots are. How would you say so far, like, you know, what's your approach to doing that when it comes to your music? My yeah. way. All right. So I see it like this. I'm about to drop a new tape soon. And that's how I'm about to do it, kind of, with the collages. But pretty much, like I said, I have so much music. Like, too much music. It's like, if I dropped all of it, it would be like, you burnt, bro. Like, why are you dropping so much? It's like, we don't want to hear you no more. You feel me? <laughs> so... What I thought, I was like, and also as me being young, and I also used to watch YouTube and listen to music all the time, my attention, our attention spans are so short nowadays as kids and as just people generally, like our attention span is off. So what I'm thinking about doing is making, I only wanted to make it like five songs, but I got so much music. So I was like, how do I mix 50 songs into five songs? Uh, let me put 10 songs on each beat. You know, I mean, uh, let me put 10 beats on each song. I mean. mm -hmm. You feel me? Let me put five, mix these five different beats on this one song. And then it'll only look like it's five songs. But when they click on it, they're going to they gonna see it's four minutes, but they're going to get stuck on it because the beat keeps switching. They keep pop. You mean? It's like, that's how I saw it. And that's how I feel like I hope it works. You feel me? But I don't know. I was just trying, trying something new. Me. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, someone who's in your position, uh, you should be trying to experiment as much as you can, though. I mean, you're you're I, I would say, you know, your visibility and brand are pretty well established right now when you're coming up with these ideas and you're pitching these kinds of projects. Um, how does this play over with your label? Because I know that you're with a label right now when you're like trying to show them these ideas or, you know, deliver them these kinds of songs. Like, are they, are they down for, for all of it or? Yeah, pretty much my creative direction is in my hands. Cause I'm in Philly all the time. Like I'm doing this in my studios with my producers. You feel me? It's like, if I was in LA with them, it would be a different story, but I'm, I'm not in LA. I'm hmm. in Philly. I'm, I'm in the studio every day. So pretty much I got to send them that music. You feel me? And it might be a certain drone where it's like certain drones may get turned down. I don't know yet. I haven't really seen that yet. You feel me? But from what I know is I make the music, I send them what I want. You feel me? And we get it clear with the producers. That's what happened with the last two singles I dropped. You hmm. feel me? So, um, Going back to the, you know, the theme of uh, what I what I'm guessing is sort of the theme of your new single learned, um, you know, what would you say personally you have learned over the course of, you know, having blown up at such a young age? And actually, you that know. song was made the day I fired my manager, my first manager. Okay. It was just like it was like it was like I was in the studio with him and we just had a whole combo. I was like, no, oh, it's done. And then I made that song. What was the, what was the impasse that was just basically like, okay, we can't work together anymore. Like what, what, what broke things down? It was just like bad business, bro. I can't even talk about it too much. Cause it's just like, it, it, was, it wasn't like a disagreement over like creative direction. It kind of, yeah, that's what the thing I wanted my creative control for real, for real. And it was like, also just like business stuff too, that just wasn't working out you feel me, but. Yeah, it was mainly the creative control. Of well, so, I mean, I guess over this uh, period of time, you know, you'd say that you learned the importance of having creative control over what you're doing. Uh, like, like, I don't care about none of the money no more. Like, fame, well, I never really did, but, like, it's just, it's not, the main focus is the music now, you feel me, and just spreading the message that I feel I want to spread, spread in the moment, that I feel like I'm a vessel towards whatever thoughts come to me or whatever you feel me so i got spread what i could spread while like to the platform i have 
You feel me? So that's that's the way I see it. Yeah. Outside of that, I mean, over this course of time, is there anything else that you feel like that you've picked up that you know you carry with you every day in terms of how to approach making music or how to operate in the music industry that you feel like you didn't know when you originally blew up and you sort of had to learn the hard way yeah i feel like our a lot of things i was just told is as a kid you feel me it's just like oh this is not right or like it's just like people wouldn't fully like I wasn't fully confident and that's what number one thing an artist needs confidence you feel me but I feel like me learning more and just like being around more producers and stuff it just taught me how to like have more be more all the way in and just like really focus on the music instead of and like do what I want to do without being afraid of whatever somebody is going to say or mm. think about how it sounds. You know, is, is there, but in the, in the business side, I would say is just be more quiet and watch and just observe and just like pay attention. You feel me? And just learn, learn, you know, just keep learning and just take your losses as lessons. Would you say personally, uh, you know, not to get too dramatic here, but would you say personally there was ever a point where there was kind of a learning curve in terms of like operating within hip hop as a culture? Because considering, you know, all the competition and the egos that can be at play, I mean, thing, things mm -hmm. can definitely get hostile, you know, if like you've crossed somebody or sure. someone doesn't like what you're doing. How I see it at this point is like, I'm young, I'm going to contradict myself a lot. And I know it. So it's no point to try to fear away from it. It's just like, at the end of the day, whatever happens, happens, you feel me? I'm going a, I'm to a respect, I'm going to stay respectful, you feel me? I ain't going to be drawn, you feel me? Like, if anything, I, I learned from other situations, like, I don't want to say his name, but like you could say six nine or like any rapper, you feel me? That just we're like crash dummies in a sense because we go out and we do things for the public to see, and they might be able to do it too. You feel me? Like if that makes sense? I don't, I don't know. It's all food. but yeah. Well, I I guess what you're saying is you're not trying to turn yourself into a social media sideshow. I guess. Right, like I don't, yeah, it's like, it's certain things like you could learn from other artists too. It's like, even with whatever like was going on with Juice World, this is another thing I wanted to say, like they was calling Juice World a Lil Uzi Vert 2.0, right? But now Juice World is getting bigger numbers than Uzi. I mean, like it's it's balanced, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Anything possible for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think about like what is almost like the next evolution of your sound because I mean, you know, Learn certainly has a particular vibe to it. One of your other recent. Uh, That's the, the thing is, Learn is like a year and a half. Well, oh, I was also going to point out another one of your big recent singles, Dazed, has like a much more like Dazed. shiny, almost like That's almost like psychedelic vibe. The beat almost has like a. Both yeah, the, the beat. They both hmm. old. I mean, oh, re regardless, oh. though, like the beat almost has like a Tame Impala kind of a vibe to it yeah. in a way. Like, it was my mom's favorite oh. song. So I had to put that up. Well, <laughs> well w would you say at this point, like, you know, considering this and considering like the collage style that you want to take your songs into, I mean, while you've been, you know, kind of like in the public eye for a few years, you're still like at a point, you're still at an age where you could be like developing your sound, making whatever, you know, your future classic could potentially be. Do you feel like you're still on the search for a sound or a style? Or do you think like unpredictability is like the name of the game and that you always just want to be changing yeah, it up? It's no matter what? It's so many mm -hmm. sounds. I've been through so many sounds already, like art learned and days. They're kind of like mm -hmm. opposites in mm -hmm. a sense. What I wanted to see. Yeah, in so that they seem like two again. sides of a coin. Mm -hmm. So that is that, but the tape I'm about to drop is, is going to be called Unorthodox. And it's pretty much rawness. It's just like collages of beats with different BPMs, but it still mixes. It still syncs. You feel me? It's still mixed and stuff, but 
it's just like all over the place. It's like, was going, you know what I'm saying? But it's like the opposite of learned and dazed. And then dazed is the opposite of learned. And then it's just like pretty much polar opposites. That's going chaos. I- but, but with all that chaos, I'm sure you're pulling from a lot of different places stylistically. You, and you mentioned like the Prodigy and Kurt Cobain earlier. Like, are there any other influences that you're pulling from and sort of like, you know, t- going on these new experiments? I've been listening to in hip hop and rap. I've been listening to a lot of um, Griselda and MF mm-hmm. Doom, RP MF mm-hmm. Doom. My boy Dash threw me on to that. Like, Two months before, a couple months before he died, and and in in October I was really banging and stuff. You feel me? But it's crazy because um, I just when he died, I played it for my uncle. My uncle told me he played me his music video when I was like eight years old. I just didn't remember, so I was like, I just been I've been listening to a lot of that, and also Flying Lotus is a goat. I really want to work with Flying Lotus. He crazy. And, um, bruh, is, um, is, you know, Tyler Creator Secret Ego? What is his? <laughs> I, 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 for, I forget the I name know. off the top of my head. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, though. But yeah, all that. I've been tapped in with all that mm-hmm. lately. Mm-hmm. And on the Prodigy side, my pr- producer's been throwing me on to that. So that's like the fine lotus type time mm. too. Uh, thinking of that, are there any other like producers that you're dying to work with? And, and speaking of, you know, sort of like the collage stuff that you were talking about, so many flying lotus records go in that direction too. Cosmogramma, yeah. LA, like the way all those pieces come together, it's like a tapestry. Definitely flying lotus up there. Um, like different people. I don't, I shout out TMA there, shout out all the hip hop producers, Metro and all them. You feel me? But, Shout out Sony Digital, you feel me? That's the bros, but I want to work with, like, different producers, like, just, like, people that's doing stuff for Tim and Paula, you feel me? Like, or or just, I don't know. It's just that type of vibe, though. Yeah, like, what, what do you think of a yeah. figure like... Um... Jaden Smith right now, for example. Like, he seems to be, like, evolving with each new release. And... That's the bro. I met him before. He cool. Uh, I feel like... I don't know him 100%, you feel me? But I, I like his swag, you feel me? Like, I like his aesthetic, too. It's, it's dope, you feel me? I like his music. I like certain songs, you feel me? Uh, it this one rock joint that was dope. It was a cool video where he was, like, spitting out blood or something. I don't know if you saw it. It was cool, though. But he's he's a cool kid. He's cool. He just different. He just... Uh, you guys only well, you know it's it's interesting thinking of someone like him and thinking of someone like x too and it's almost like there is so much drive to try something different and be creative within them that they totally transcend hip-hop altogether and then they're making rock music they're making singer songwriter music they're making acoustic music sure. and that sort of thing i mean is, is is that sort of a direction you could see for yourself especially given you know you mentioned listening to kurt cobain earlier yeah also, I, I do do certain stuff like that already, but it's like I freestyle all my music. So when I'm doing this, I'm simply having fun with it. I'm simply making music that, like, bro, it's just like, if I'm a kid, I'm going to be a kid. You feel me? But at the same time, I'm still, if I'm going to put out a piece of work, it got to be, it's going to be something I really enjoy listening mm. to. So I want to put out something that I just played around with. You know, Thinking of that, um, being a kid, as it were, like you just said, uh, how personally do you feel like you balance the obligations of trying to keep alive and grow a successful music career while also, you know, holding up to the expectations of a, an average dude who's your age? You know, the life pressures that come with just being that, you know, I mean, uh, again, do you, do you feel like you successfully pull that balance off or do you feel like in a way you've effectively given up being a kid at this point? I feel like I, as a kid, I, I used to play video games. I don't play video games no more, not once. I, I've been on my PS4 in like past months. But I'm having fun. It's not like I'm just working. I'm a, like, bro, this is a blessing. Like, this is what I always wanted to do. I wanted to be a rapper from the jump. 
I always wanted to do this. Now I get to go to the studio every day and not like, what? Yeah, this this is just is just not a normal childhood. It's still a child in a sense. It's just a different form. It's, it's just you out late, you out your schedule off. You feel me? It's just like it's a wild, overwhelming childhood. And, you know, how personally, if you're willing to talk about this, would you say all of this has shifted or changed or impacted just like the family dynamic? Because, of you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, what's crazy is when after I got we all I lived in the same house with my whole family, like my my aunts, two aunts. Wait, it was three. Yeah, two aunts. You know what I mean? And then my uncle, my grandma, my grandpa, my mom. Um, that's it, right? It was five people. But so when I when I popped when I popped well, it was seven all together, yeah. But when I popped off, it was um it was we sold that they sold the house and stuff. So my grandma moved all the way up in Jersey and oh my aunt lived with me now. So the family still close. Like if anything, we just got closer. You feel me? It was just like we just got we got to be on our own time now, and like we get to do what we got. We need to do pretty much. But everything's still still the same. Like it's not like stuff drastically changed with the family and like the folk. Like with the folk, like all my friends, I'm still friends with the same friends. Like I ain't really switch up on that. You feel me? It was all it all just stayed. Like not stay, but it was just like I stick to, stay down the day ones. You feel me? Hmm. So, so in in your own experience, there hasn't been a sort of any like tensions created in your relationships over like getting popular or anything like that. I mean, that's something rappers often mention. Like, yeah, of course, that's always always gonna be a thing. But in that sense, it wasn't family. That was more like that's how I saw who was family who was. It's the other side, you feel me? It's like, like it's just observing and just really just keeping people for who they are and just not, like you can see through the yes men and through all the people that's telling you stuff is good for no reason, like without sent knowing for it. And, um, you know, just a, a, a question about uh, something a lot a lot of people are asking me about just because maybe they see some like you know similarities or parallels between you, what you're doing and their and, and what they're doing but mm. have you listened to much like blade or drain gang or anything or like young lean is yeah, my one homie put me on yeah. his music a while ago um he dope i talked to young lean i've been talking to him his new stuff is dope too uh, i would be down to work with all of them you feel me i ain't, I ain't got no picks for real i ain't and to uh you know go back to the soundcloud scene for a minute i mean you know in, in uh, I, th- I think in most people's estimation like that was a moment that was a wave it kind of came and it kind of went but you know do you still feel like there is you know potential there on that platform and potential in there you know there in that scene is, are, is, 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 is there still like interesting stuff going on that people are missing out on because they're not paying attention because they think oh soundcloud that's kind of over you think there's interesting stuff going on that piff? Um, yeah, probably to a degree, you know. But but I feel like maybe in a way culturally, like all like, all all the focus is almost shifted over to like TikTok and like whatever kind of music pops over there might sound like it might pop over there. Yeah, but all right, I feel like art. I feel like SoundCloud is more for artists mm. now. Then maybe, but I I know that SoundCloud is definitely in the new generation. Maybe not back in the day, but in the new generation, more popping. Then uh, that mm-hmm. piff, mm-hmm. I think. I ain't, I ain't trying this that piff. Shout out that piff. I ain't never dropped nothing on that piff. I really did. I haven't. You won't find one in that ox. It might be like a fake mm-hmm. person dropping or something on that. And I mean, how right now? <clears throat> You know, in what artists that people are listening to or what mixtapes or projects that are popular, you know, would would you say like the influence of that SoundCloud wave is still like being felt and everything? Um, wait, say that again. You, you were talking earlier about, um, you know, artists like X and people like you who sort of like came mm-hmm. out of the SoundCloud scene, the influence that you had like still, 
being felt today. And so you're saying like classic albums? I, I, from I, I guess what I'm saying is sort of like in what artists and projects today, you know, do you hear like, oh, you know, that's like an influence from some SoundCloud artist or some artist who was like popular on SoundCloud. You know, it's like, uh, is, is, is that influence like oh, still kind of like being felt today in a lot of new stuff? Of course. I feel like Lil Peep definitely influenced mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I mean, it's always going to keep going, you feel me? But it's no such influence is everywhere. It's getting to the point where it's hard to understand who it's coming from, where it's coming from, because it's so many different things you're listening mm -hmm. to. So I could go listen to Cause me, I I listen to a little peep song, and then you go well now anybody you'll listen to a little peep peep emo song, and then you'll go listen to some Juicy J, turn in the club song, and then you'll go listen to like some hardcore X. You know what I'm saying? It just it's all switched up now to the point where you don't know what's coming out after you heard what you heard. Like your inspiration is all over the place, but. It is certain people that do sound identical in a sense sometimes. You know, speaking um, of X really quickly, uh, uh, one of your most, you know, legendary placements was, uh, you know, on uh, uh, that uh, triple dollar sign, you know, record that you had, had done with sure. him. Um, would you go into a little bit like the process of recording that track and how you guys crossed over and just like what that experience was, was like? Pretty much that track I recorded in a studio in like 10 minutes it was a freestyle i was just i was just lit with the homie it, my homie was on that song actually it was it wasn't even x it was it was just a hook i was recording i, I ain't, he wasn't nobody was on it at first it was just a beat i hopped on it made the hook now i let my homie get on the verse and then i played it for x when well, me and x we was like dming like he dm me back and we was just cool from there and we would FaceTime sometimes and like play the game and stuff. Like we would play Fortnite sometimes and like just just talk for hours, you feel me? That was the brother, you feel me? And I never really met him for real in person, but he was, it was weird. It was like we, it was cause I was his, bro, he was like one of my favorite rappers before I even was popping, before I was up. And then to put me on his album, it, it don't make sense. It's like, it was connected. Like it was just alignment. But you, you never met in person, but you know, do you feel like at this point, technologically and culturally, is is that even necessary to like call somebody close or call somebody a friend or call somebody influential? Because you know, as you said, you were able to sort of make that connection with him just by talking to him on the internet. Right. I feel like I had a connection with him by listening to his music. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's like, especially a lot of fans feel like that. You feel me? Fans feel like they know him like they call him Ja. You feel me? Like a lot of fans will call Pete Gus. Or you feel me? It's just they even though they never met them once in their lives. You feel me? It's just they got that bond. It's like you can't break that for real, for real. And I feel like even though I never met him, it was like he could see that I was inspired by him. And he ain't he didn't want to be fake towards that. Like he kept it real and he he kept his promise. Like he told me he was gonna put me on that album. You feel me? So is is that sort of a connection that you hope that people will make with your music that they feel like they know you personally through what they hear you doing? For sure, for sure. I feel like also it's a thing I gotta give back to. Like any kids that make music, I gotta give them the feature that they want. You feel me? It's like I don't really. I don't really like to charge that much now, you feel me, for features. Like, I don't really usually charge if it's if it's with the road or, like, with somebody I really like. Or, like, if it's a kid, usually, like, T.I. son, that's the bro. I don't know if you know him. His name King. But he came to Philly, bro. We made a hit, hit song, you feel me? And it never came out yet, but that's the homie, you feel me? And I would cook up with him whenever, wherever, you feel me? It's just just giving back to the to the youth and just like to the kids that saw you on the screen. It's like you get to put them on that screen where they were seeing you. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it ends in a positive cycle where everyone's supporting everyone, I guess, at the end of the day. 
That's what it needs. I feel like Philly, especially, don't got no support out here for real, for real. So it's like, where when I see it, I will be seeing it, and it, that shit good. Like it's it's good. Like you need more support. Mm-hmm. For you know, musically, do you feel like the city is uh, is is pretty underrated and not getting as much attention as it could? Because you know you do have Meek, you do have you know Uzi, you do have a lot of artists you know from from that uh, from that area that make a lot of noise. I feel like, yeah, because it is right next to New York. So New York is just like, you feel me? It can't it can't really be compared. But I also feel like Philly does hate a lot and there's no support, like I said. So it's like, maybe we don't deserve it yet. You feel me? I don't know, though. Like, like I love Philly. This is my hometown, you feel me? But it's like, we do be hating on each other sometimes. We do got we to show more mm-hmm. love. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about sort of like a, you know, producing a hit earlier and, but also, you know, conversely, uh, um, you know, putting out these projects and song concepts that are pretty like abstract and experimental in a way. Um, you know, how often do you find yourself in like more of a hit type of mindset? And, you know, while you've put out there your creative ambitions pretty clearly, like, do you see yourself growing in terms of like, you know, chart positions and Spotify numbers like in the future? Is that also sort of a goal that you have in mind? It, it, yeah, I'm down to do it. Like I, I'm down to do it, but it's not like a thing where it's like, I want that mm-hmm. so much because I'm actually like, I'm really trying to focus on this music before it's all like that. Like, I don't care how long it takes for me to get up. I don't want to just skyrocket out of nowhere for a fool. Like I want it to build up. Because if I skyrocket, it's like you can't recreate. It's hard to recreate that. You feel me? Or it's just like it's just like long jeopardy. You feel me? Like it's it'd be easier to keep that if I just went at a certain pace. And you, but it's also just making quality in music. In in terms of like growing and evolving and changing, do do you feel like to any degree are you still like in people's minds like dogged by the memory of like oh that's that kid that like blew up a few years back you know like do do, do, yeah. do you still do you do you work to sort of like put another image into people's heads of like who you are and what you're doing you're not just that one thing i feel like i don't even need to work on it because i seen how it worked like let's put ariana grande for for an mm-hmm. example when she was on uh Victoria. Yeah, she she was she was a child Victoria. actor. Yeah, but they was memeing her yeah. for a while, and but now she got a whole nother look. Like you wouldn't even remember her from like you wouldn't even oh that was her. It's like one of that, and it's like oh she she draw she she going crazy, like that's how you gonna see it. Like, but that's why it's like I I'm gonna have so many looks. Like my hair already looked different. I might go bald one one year. Like <laughs> I might don't, look like don't, you, don't, bro. Don't give like, me any bald competition. I'm gonna be on you, bro. <laughs> me versus you, bro. We and Ali Chopper just mm-hmm. did it. No, I think it was a cat, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of that, I think we'll uh, you know take a few uh, viewer questions and uh, and everything. Um, from uh from the chat but also from uh again if you guys scroll down and you hit the uh, q a tab you can submit some uh questions from matt and we'll uh we'll throw them out there um he's a manthony at <laughs> gellen games asks uh a pretty interesting question about your vocal delivery and your rap style something i noticed like on a, on some of your newer tracks that have like more of a uh like a raw direction he's asking um you know why do you uh uh let your you know voice like as you're kind of yelling or getting like really aggressive like cracks so much on the mic and everything do you feel like that like conveys a certain sort of energy i feel like it gives it more rawness and it gives it more like distortion Mm. and also it's just grunge it's real grunge and just like it's not trying to be so soft and just like trying to give you the, I'm giving you the rip. However it was in that moment, you're going to hear it from me. I'm not going to try to like, nah, nah, nah. I'm not like, when it, if it happens like that, it's going to happen like that. Like, I feel like on vocal cords, I would want to learn vocal cords in the future, but 
right now I'm just trying to give people the real. Like, if if I'm not, what you say, Ma? Because you keep talking. Mm-hmm. Like, it's getting the real. Like, it's, you, it's, you ruin the, you keep on look, this is my mom, and she keep ruining it. I said puberty. That's why his voice is oh, cracking. Oh wow! I thought I thought I thought you were, I thought you were giving Matt notes, and instead you're you're breaking his balls off camera. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. She hated it, bro. I told you I, before I was famous. She was like, "There's a billion rappers. You, you think you're gonna be a one in a billion rapper that's gonna make it?" He's I'm saying, like, "Yeah, mom, I'm gonna be one in a billion. <laughs> you definitely said it like that in the whip. I was like, "I'm gonna be like Eminem." Wow. <laughs> Well, you you call, you definitely called the bluff. You called the bluff. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, no wave, no wave stripador. I'm not sure how to pronounce all of this. Um, they're asking if, uh, if generally right now, do you feel like there is, um, uh, is 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 there a lot of. Uh, a similarity going on in the trap scene right now is—is is it like too self-referential, or is everybody trying to copy or sort of like deliver the same idea, or is it more diverse than maybe he's uh, pointing than he's playing it out to be? I think it's not our, like it's not people trying to copy. It might be certain times, but I think it's just like is yeah, it is repetitive. I'm not gonna lie, but I think it's just his brainwash, bro. It's like. We're brainwashed in the saying like new chain, new ice, just the same thing every time. And like even I'm, I do it. Like I'm guilty of it. I'm not gonna lie. You feel me? But it's because I freestyle on my music. It's like you're saying things that you don't know what you're saying for. Real, you feel me? And it's just like you're repetitive. But I'm, I'm trying to learn. More. I've been learning more words, trying to do that less. You feel me? But I have been peeping that. You know, talking about freestyling, like what draws you to that generally as opposed to uh, and, you know, I, I, I know it can be a pain in the ass, but like writing everything out, doing this and doing, you know, no, I, I did. I did write everything. Mm-hmm. I pretty much what I think from freestyling, it makes my flow mm-hmm. better. Like when I write, I'm like, like robotic. It's like it's just like when I'm freestyling, it's in the moment. It's just coming out. It's from the soul. It's not like. Oh da 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 da. Oh da 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 da. It's like I'm reading the script or something. You feel me? Like definitely, but um, also it's just yeah that. And also I, what I do now is instead of writing, I'll search up new words and I'll learn new words, and then I'll just throw them in when I'm freestyling. Mm-hmm. So you just have more off the top of your head to go off of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I mean that's uh. The, the, is is uh you know that something that you feel like in the future would you try to seek out more of a balance with um though yeah. like you know it's like writing writing certain parts improving like certain parts yeah for sure for sure um i just i'm just in my live fast bag right now and just going in just doing stuff on some rock star type hmm. vibe. um young skirt wants to know uh what was it like uh hanging in the dollar boys when uh oh dollar yeah. boys dollar boys was a group it was a dance group in philadelphia they used to woo tang tang it mm-hmm. you feel me pretty much when i was with them my boy zeus uh zeus ox that's my boy he's still game he in my crew mm-hmm. you feel me but he the one that threw me on the dollar boys and pretty much you would just go to cyphers down north philly it's just a bunch of kids in this room just dancing, sweating. Just like, bro, like you just try and get in the next video, try and get the next Dollar Boy shirt. Like, you just out here, you feel me? But they beats be crazy. They be making like remixes. Like, it's kind of like Jersey. What is it called? Jersey. Jersey dance. It's like Jersey club mm-hmm. music. The like one. Mountains? Yeah, like, yeah. But. It's kind of like that, and it was, it was fun actually. I made a lot of a lot of uh, videos on my old YouTube that's actually up still. Y'all could probably find it. Of you, of you so, like doing routines and stuff. Yeah. And like, 
Oh, bro, I'm drunk, bro. I'm drunk, bro. It's bad. Like, like y'all gonna meet me. Bro. Well, how, how how long were you doing that? Like in total? For like uh -huh. a year. No, and I started making music. Is is that something that you at this point? Is that something that you like miss at all? Dancing? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm good with rapping. I better be, be a rapper. Than it's me. it's. Oh, I mean, you know, it's like. Well, you you were you were doing that a few years. You were doing that years before TikTok was a thing, and now dancing on TikTok is sort of yeah, like the new thing. It's crazy. It's like it's like how I feel right now. It's like all, right, all the music I've been dropping is like from three two like two years ago. You feel me? So it's like it's just like now I'm hearing stuff that just sound like it's, it's like. I never, it just don't make sense to me. It's like we're in a parallel universe where everything is being repeated in patterns. Mm. And everybody just saying, it sounds the same because of that. I feel like it's not, I don't know. It, you know, speaking of, um, you know, the age, uh, you know, issue, uh, Color16 wants to know if as a result of like, you know, what you've accomplished and what you're trying to accomplish, um, at this point in your career, do you feel like radically different from other people your age? Does it maybe at times become difficult to relate to other people your age? Yeah, I mean, I don't really hang around people my age. I don't, I mean, I, actually it's different now because a lot of people my age that DM me, like all my friends are older, they like at least 18. And uh, the people that DM me usually are my fans that are like young. But they remind me of just me starting out. You feel me? Like trying, because they're all trying to be rappers, and they're like, "All, all kids are rappers now." You feel me? Because they, they saw other kids could do it. You feel me? Like I ain't gonna say I'm the first. I definitely wasn't the first kid, but like in the hood on like the SoundCloud wave, it just like made it to where it's like anybody could do this. Like, you feel mm -hmm. me? No, I mean, that that sort of seems like, you know, what the Internet has kind of done across the board, you know, like on all creative platforms. Like if anybody has an idea or a concept or something and they want to record it, shoot it, anything, like get it out there and you could potentially blow up. Um, you know, do you feel like there is also a downside to that, though? You know, it's like, do you feel like putting yourself out there on the Internet, especially, you know, if you're at a point before you're famous, like does that run a risk? It's always pros and cons and mm -hmm. everything, but I feel like. Uh, yeah, but all right, how I see it is like, yeah, you could say this internet, we on the phone every day and it's brainwashing and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and all that, but also there's ways that people are making a living, making money, making, like, also spreading messages and changing people's lives through this internet. You feel me? It's, it's all perspective and it's objective. So it's like, is balanced. You know, you you talk uh, for a second time about the um, the brainwashing thing. Like, you know, not that there isn't sort of like a, a sense of hive mind on the internet. There definitely is. But like, wh where do you feel like that originates from? You know, do you feel like that's people sort of like copying the same simple idea that catches on over and over and over? Or do you feel like there's, or, or, or do you feel like there's something guiding that? I don't, I think it may be it may be an energy, but I feel like it's also just just his history repeats itself. So it's like through different forms, it could, in a sense, it's hard to explain. Cause in from a philosophy standpoint, it's like brainwash would just be what you see and how you interpret it. It's not like nothing else doing it. It's all yourself because it's all mind matter. It's all what you think and how you perceive it. Hmm. And, you know, you were talking earlier about like, I don't know, people having like these almost like materialistic messages repeated to them over and over and over in, in all sorts of media. But, you know, you're talking specifically about music. Um, yeah. You know, do you feel like you know, are artists incentivized to go in that direction or do you feel like they're just kind of bringing it upon themselves? Like, do, you know, like, like do, 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 me, artists, do artists have the me. power to change it if they want it? Yeah. You know what it is? Is a lot of Kanye said it before. He said, stop trying to be cool. He's like, is, is, is people 
all right, like in school, you would wear a certain thing or you would do a certain thing or you would act mean to a certain people to be cool or something. Like certain people would do that, you feel me? And it's just, it's a, uh, you get a boost of serotonin or something like that, you feel me? And I guess when people are flexing, that just, they get in their bag, I guess. I mean, I, I don't, and also it's just, it's been said so much. I don't know. It, it could be that, it's like they're directed by somebody or something, like the labels or something, but I don't I don't think I think it's just like repeated and it's catchy and they see it the same way. Like when you got your clothes good clothes on and you feeling good and shawty's all over, like you just wanna it's the ego too. The ego is taking control, like of a lot of rappers. It's just their feet and then people are feeding the ego like behind you to keep going yeah keep buying new clothes you just gotta pay that back next year but it's just um i feel like yeah definitely just people need to step out the box and stop trying to be cool and that's the only way it would be able to like but there's nothing wrong with that type of that music is still needed to be made for the vibes Mm. people can't understand that ultimately though in a way do you feel like um that kind of, I guess, uh, attitude or point of view, has it uh, proven to be, I guess, like toxic or dangerous for some of the artists who are like, you know, uh, uh, a part of that or not sort of like, you know, looking out for, I don't know, the ways in which that could impact you negatively, be it sort of like, um, uh, you know, Lil Peep or Juice World. you know, do you feel like that that attitude or that life can be sort of like consuming, you know, and, and destructive? And, and if it is like, and that's and that's I'm not a not, criticism against them. I mean, that's a pitfall. A lot of a lot of no, people yeah. can fall into. Well, also, I, I guess what I'm saying is like, personally, how do you feel like you kind of take yourself out of that so that you don't get sucked into like the same, you know, the same kind of cycle? What I, it's crazy because what I've seen it as, not to say they know like, but like in the most respectful way possible, it, it felt like a sacrifice in a sense, because it's like they were known for doing drugs and just being out here wilding. And in that time, that's it was cool to drink and do all that and, and to do all them drugs, you feel me? But when they peeped, they, oh, you can actually die off of this. It's not candy. It's people are it's showing the kids like, yeah, all your favorite rappers are dying now. It's, be careful like stop doing it it's a warning pretty mm-hmm. much and it's like that's why i saw it like that it's like it was crazy to me. it's like damn deep you feel me but i don't know that's how i saw it mm. and you know considering you know your relationship with your label do you feel like labels play a role in any of this or could be playing a role in any of this because it seems like a lot of the time it's sort of like you know they're rolling out the career and the media attention and getting the records put out. But when it comes to like anything bad happening, you know, it's like, it's like, Whoa. I have to, I, I thought like hitmen are things you feel me. You never know. Like they got money, bro. It's, it's not like a thing. Like they was talking about Sony doing crazy stuff with Prince and stuff, but like people got money to hire anybody to get anything done quick. You feel me? So it's, you never know. It's always going to be the mystery for a friend. But hopefully certain things, certain things are getting exposed now because the internet is just, everything is online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, as, as you say, there's like a lot of money and there's a lot of resources there, but it's been pretty, I guess, uh, disappointing to see labels for the most part, just abandoning artists and leaving them out to dry as the pandemic is like torn apart people's careers, can't play live, can't do this, can't do that. And especially if you like I'm I'm sixteen and I'm thinking of it like, I wanna get get on before, I'm about to be eighteen, I gotta get on. But like people is thirty, like really like in the mix, like rappers like in a deal that's like just like, damn, I gotta get out, do this, make this move, but it's like there's nothing going on it's fine. yeah there's nothing going on and in the meantime like when you were making money it was cool but now you're at a point where no health care no mental health services no anything and people are just kind of stuck for sure, for sure. It's crazy. well um 
before we uh you know part ways do you uh, uh sort of want to put a stamp on anything that you're coming out with soon that you want us to most definitely like be paying attention to like what's going to be kind of your next move creatively that we need to look out for i'm about to drop another uh little tape mm -hmm. ep pretty much five songs of doing what i was talking about the collages yep, yep. and just so pretty much with that i'm just getting it mixed all the songs are pretty much done they just got to be mixed will that together. be will that be so, like a mixtape mixtape or is that going to be like on streaming services yeah it should be on our okay. platforms i should be getting cleared so it's probably going to take like a good month for two so not too soon but not too long okay all right um yeah. well dude we appreciate you coming through and being an open book and appreciate you yeah Thank you. Thank you for just being a good conversationalist and just telling us uh, everything that you could. Love, uh, bro. Appreciate you for having me, for real. This was dope. Mm -hmm. And I thought they was going to draw on me in the comments. They didn't. They were showing love. Yeah, everybody in the comments been uh been super respectful and chill and have been uh, asking questions mm -hmm. and just been... Uh, uh, enjoying what you're saying, right around gang, right around gang is uh, that's that's, yeah. uh, that's that's what. Yeah, oh man, that's that's what Dave the Cuss just said. So, um, yeah. Casper wants to know really quickly uh, what what are your favorite albums or songs from the Prodigy? The Prodigy, my favorite video from them is "Smack My oh, Be Up." I think it was named that. Yeah, like it was definitely named "Smack My Be Up." It wasn't even didn't even say bitch, but. If, if you're into that, you got to listen to the Chemical Brothers too. Okay, I just watched the movie Enter uh -huh. the Void. That movie is fire. <laughs> One of my favorite movies right now. I ain't gonna lie, but um, my favorite song by them is Fire Fire uh, Fire mm, Star. Yeah, because it's just raw. It's just like and with his accent too. It's like yo, that's crazy. I'm, you know, I'm I'm gonna say if, if you're into that, you should you should. You should get into a little bit of death grips. You listen to any death grips? I got tap. Yeah, in. you. I, I might have heard them before, but I got tap. Yeah, chat, chat, chat over here loves death grips. You should, you should listen to some death grips. They're they're heavy into uh, them. They're also heavy into you know another artist from that era that makes a really aggressive beat driven music. Atari Teenage Riot. I mean, their their name even kicks ass. Atari Teenage Riot. Yeah, Crazy. no, it's. Atari like yep, game. At at Atari like game the game, game console. Atari Teenage Riot. That yeah, so crazy. so check out them. Yeah. Check out yeah. Death Grips. Check out Chemical Brothers, and then and then see see if that inspires the music any. Let me know. Yeah, definitely, I got you. We definitely gonna stay in touch. Bro. All right, well, Matt Ox, thank you very much for coming through.